Magic squares are clues you will often come across in Sudoku variant puzzles, such as the puzzle Latin Magic that we're drawing out on the screen now. If you've not played this amazing puzzle, I highly recommend that you do, and I'll link to it with a card here on the screen. But this tutorial is all about magic squares, so let's ignore everything but the blue box in the middle, and focus in on the magic square. The definition of a magic square is that each column in the box and each row in the box and the two diagonals here must add up to the same total. Under normal Sudoku rules, we have to place the digits 1 through to 9 in every box and therefore we know the sum of those numbers is 45. As we need to have three columns sum up to 45 and each of them has to be equal we know therefore that each column, row, and diagonal have to sum up to 15. If you need to, feel free to pause the video here or rewind to convince yourself that indeed the only option on the table for totals is 15. Now I want us to focus on one cell only. This center cell that I have highlighted in green. First off, the column going through it needs to add to 15, meaning there are two digits in these two cells that join the middle one to sum up to 15. There's also a row going through the middle and we have two different cells that must sum up to 15. Finally, there are two diagonals going through the middle cell and each of them requires yet another two different sets of digits that sum up to 15. You can see we are now left with four arrows that each pass through the middle cell and each of them needs to sum up to 15. Now let's consider briefly, what are the options for that cell? And let's consider all the digits available to us in a Sudoku, meaning the digits 1 through to 9. Let's start with 1 for now and see how we get on with it. So we place 1 in the middle. Next, let's try the column and we'll pick any other digits for now. Let's try 9. 9 and 1 equals 10, so we need to place a 5 at the end of that column to get us to 15 and so we shall. Now, let's think about the row for a moment. Let's try the next largest remaining digit, which is 8. 8 and 1 makes 9. We need to add a 6 in the row to allow us to get to 15. Now, we still have two diagonals to place, and no matter what digits we try that we have remaining, we cannot get either of the remaining diagonals to 15. I hope it's clear at this point why 1 cannot be in the center feel free to rewind again to step through this, rather than laboriously take you through every possible digit. I'm going to show you what the updated table on the right hand side would look like for all the remaining possible digits. If we look at 2 for example, we need the two remaining digits to add up to 13. In our three ways for us to get to 13, that doesn't require us to repeat the two. We have 4 and 9, 5 and 8, and 6 and 7. Feel free to take a moment here to work through the table on the right hand side and indeed confirm that we have exhausted every possibility on how we can get to 15. Now if you remember, we said we had four different arrows going through the center cell. Therefore we need a digit that has four sets of adjacent neighbors that can get us to 15. And there is only one digit that allows us to do so. That's the 5. At this point, we have definitively proven that the center cell could only be a 5, as nothing else would allow us to complete the magic square, and we can confidently write a 5 into the center cell. Now, let's give some thought to all the remaining digits we still need to place, and let's focus on the neighbors for now. Now, those adjacent cells can come of one of two flavors. Either a neighbor is odd, or a neighbor is even. Thankfully, normal Sudoku rules doesn't allow a zero, so we're not going to have to answer the question of whether a zero is odd or even today. We know 15 is an odd number, as is the 5. To allow us to get to an odd number with the 5 included, either the remaining two digits will be odd as well, so three odds make an odd number, or we have one odd number, the 5, 
joined with two even digits. And you end up with this pattern here, whereby the blue boxes have to be of one parity, and the other gray boxes have to be of a different parity. The question that we now have to answer is, what parity is each color? We can use one of the columns or even one of the rows that do not go through the center digit at all. Let's use this column, for example, and think it through. We have two blues and one gray square. For us to be able to get to an odd number and therefore stand a chance to get to 15, grays are gonna have to be odd and blue squares are gonna have to be even. Now we can center pencil mark these in to give us the possible options in every square. Now, if you look at this square, every magic square out there, we have proven is restricted to what we have on the screen here. Isn't this square a beauty? Now, we're not able to go any further at this point unless we know one more digit in this magic square. Now, for the sake of argument, let's assume that square is a two. For this diagonal to add up to 15, we know the other cell in that diagonal must be an eight. So let's go ahead and place that now. At first glance, you may think that's as far as we can take it at this point, but that is far from true. First, let's tidy up our pencil marks. We can remove two and eight from being an option, leaving us with a four and six. We're still not done though. Let's think about the eight for a second. And the question to ask yourself is, can nine or even a seven pair up with that eight? And the answer to that question is of course no. Seven and eight will get us up to 15, leaving us no space for a third digit. And nine and eight gets us to 17, and that's clearly already exceeded our target sum. So we can remove the seven and nine from being a possibility right next to the eight, and you'll find that we have a similar constraint with the one and three adjacent to the two. Now, this is as far as we can take it at this point without knowing one more digit in this magic square. Let's assume for now that we know that this cell here is a seven. And that's it. With only three digits placed, the two, five, and seven, you can now complete the entirety of this magic square. In fact, if you know any two digits on the magic square in addition to the five, you'll always be able to complete the entirety of that magic square. Opposite the seven, we clearly need a three to get us to 15. The two and seven need a six to get us to 15. Five and six require a four to get us to 15. Six and eight require a one to get to 15. And finally, four and two require a nine, and that gets us to 15. Isn't the magical square indeed magical? Now you can set forth and solve many more Sudoku variant puzzles armed with a lot more knowledge of the power you can wield with a magic square by your side.